very glad to know you're still with us. The Nigerian Governors Forum, NGF, has stated that the agreement between the federal government and organized labor and consequential adjustment on the new minimum wage is not binding on state governments. The NGF chairman, Governor Kayo Defiami of Ekiti State, said the agreement and directive apply only to federal workers. Mr. Fayemi said, while the state governments have accepted the 30,000 naira baseline, each will negotiate with its workers on the implementation and the consequential adjustments. He added that every state has its own trade union with a negotiating committee that would undertake this discussion with their state governments. Joining us to discuss this are two gentlemen. Um, we have um, Shegu Sopito from the last session. Thank you very much for staying. Okay. And of course, we have joining us uh, Biodu uh, Shoumi, also a political analyst. Pleasure to have you join us. I'm pleased to be here. <coughs> Do you smell trouble? Well, um, by disposition and pro labor, given my left background. But on this occasion, I tend to agree with the governors um, because um, otherwise we'll be negating true federalism. That is the major problem there. When you have a really restructured country, each government, the component parts, will negotiate with their own workers based on what they can afford to pay and based on the size of the civil service. Now, in this situation, what you have is we have a highly centralized uh, bureaucracy, which is called, uh, or a contraption, which is called um, uh, federal government, deciding everything without taking into consideration the resources of states. For but, instance, but this wasn't done in isolation. Let's clear yes. that up. I, the I will tell you where, in consultation, I will tell you where they all agree. They agree on the baseline 30,000 minimum wage because there is a huge justification for it. Don't forget when the federal government devalue a uh, dollar, you know, when we're paying 165 naira to a dollar, we're not paying 362 or thereabout. Now, that consequently means, you know, lowering of people living standard by 100%. So, and because of that, we just needs to go, needs to go up. And I'm sure all the governors understand that. And the problem now is in implementation. When it comes to implementation, when you agree a national minimum wage, that is nobody should be in Nigeria earning less than 30,000 naira. What would happen? Are you going to apply it pro rata, for instance, from the percentage difference between 18,000 and 30,000? Would that apply pro rata to all categories of staff? That is what the governors are talking about. You know, because it's important for us to understand the issue. They're not but saying even they the pay consequential, the consequential, even the consequential yeah. adjustment. It, it, you see how long it took before they agreed, but they finally came to a conclusion on that. So why are the governors still adamant? The governors, because the issue of applying it to all levels across the board were not agreed. What they agreed on, the governors and the federal government, you know, is actually the minimum wage of 30,000 naira. But people have forgotten that the moment you increase the, 30, the minimum wage to 30,000 naira, it will have a consequential effect, you know, on the salaries of other categories of workers from level two you know, up to level 16. It will have an impact on them because you need to beef it up. The issue now is by what percentage? That is where the governors are trying, you know, to play based on what they can afford to do. But don't forget that we are already in trouble economically. The only reason why we had to increase the cost of um, fuel is, was simply because the governors could not afford to pay salaries. And the federal government had to do that in order to create more naira for them. The only reason why they also devalued the dollar was also to help the governors to pay salary so that they can now, because we sell, we make all our foreign earnings in dollars. And okay. therefore, when you devalue, what happens is you get more naira. And because we pay people in naira, then uh, it was easier for them. But don't, they are not solving the problem at all. The major problem in the country today is not even corruption. It's the fact that we have... We are running a system that is stunting growth and development, and consequently is leading to high cost of um, goods, you know, to inflation, is leading to poverty. We are now the poverty capital of the world. So any system that you are running creating that situation, whether you increase wages a million times, in the value naira a million times, you are not going to eliminate poverty. All right, what would happen at the end of the day is we need to restructure the country. That is basically where I'm going. That is a long-term solution, you know, to, to this problem. To problem. But let me bring you in. First off, do you agree with him that the state government, uh, governors rather, have a point? Absolutely. 
Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Yeah, I mean, because, like you said, you know, we run a federal system. Doesn't that, we, then, we, uh, doesn't that then rubbish the entire process of, you know, minimum wage review if we have to go through this all no, the time? No, not necessarily. No. I mean, so, so we run a federation, right? And the federation has different federating units and different tiers and levels of government. Right? What should have happened and what did happen at the earlier stages of the conversation around the minimum wage issue was that all the stakeholders were carried along. So you had the Council of State meet, you know, and you know, they recommended 30,000 and everybody agreed. But like you said, you know, talking about the consequential adjustments and from that point on, it would appear right now as though the, the state governments were not properly and thoroughly represented in the negotiations that resulted in the agreement that was announced um, last week, right? So um, that's the mistake because um, we run a federal system. So each state should um, know what it is capable of paying. And um, every federal system around the world, I mean, we, we copy the American system more or less. And if you go to the United States, the minimum wage is different across all the states. You have a base that you can't go below, but then some states pay way higher you know, than that base. And do, that's do, do, you, do you truly believe that the states, all the states, or let's say even the states that are saying they cannot pay are truly in, unable uh, to pay these. Excellent. So that's, so that's the second part of this conversation because for me, I, I view this from two perspectives. One is the perspective of um, the structure and the process around the minimum wage conversation. The second question is capacity and capability of the states and the federal government to pay. And for me, I think before any state government can say that they can't pay, they have to show the people that they are committed to reducing the cost of governance. That, that takes me to the point uh, I mean, that the labor unions are yeah. now coming up with. They are saying that the state governors, in order to prove that they don't have the finances yeah. to offset the minimum wage, they have to show their internally generated revenues so that the uh, labor will agree with them. Consequent upon that review, they will now maybe bring down the um, minimum wage. But do you see governors actually opening their a budget or their, you know, their finances to labor unions? Do you see that happening? Well, one way or the other, I've had reasons to work consult closely with two governors um, in the Southwest at the highest level, and I know what <clears throat> these governors are doing. When it comes to the budget, if they need to put up a budget of one trillion, five hundred billion, what they simply do is uh, push up the figures of the IGR. Not real, not the actual. They will pump up the figures in order to allow the House of Assembly to say, okay, we're expecting so much money from IGR. So we're going to have to approve the budget and then gives room for borrowing, you know, to fill it up. In some other cases, you have other governors who are under declaring the IGL, uh, <laughs> whereby uh, some are going one way or the other. So it's a major problem that we have. But you cannot totally rely on IGL when it comes to minimum wage. The, what the income guaranteed in the country today is what we make from, from oil, you know, our export earnings. All the rest are not guaranteed because if you look at the demography of uh, industries in Nigeria today, you see a lot of movement, people folding up in one place, moving to another location or yeah, leaving the country. Not to interrupt you, not to interrupt but, you, yeah. but the, mini, the internally generated revenue is not the only source of income for these states. Absolutely. They have federal allocation and they are also asking if federal government can tweak the amount that goes to these states so that it can help. Exactly. That's where I'm on. going. I'm going to give you the figures now so that you see why we cannot put pressure on the governors, all that, except to put pressure on the federal government so that we structure this country once and for all. Now, let me give you the figures so that you yourself can start imagining. The total workforce employed by all the state governments in Nigeria are more than the total workforce of the federal government. The federal government collects 52.68% of federal allocation. Please, you can quote me on that. 52.68%. A state governor, because of the variation in the 13% derivation for all producing states, 
you can't tell exactly what they collect. It varies. But if you go by the vast majority of the states, you know, three quarters of the states not collecting 13% derivation, they collect 0.78%, less than 1%. 0.78%. Meanwhile, all the resources are moved from the states to the center. The federal government does not own the resources with their pumping. The states own those resources. All those resources are migrated, including VAT and all that, to the center, you know, to share. And then you end up giving them less than 1%, 0.78%. So in this situation, I think the way forward is for the federal government in the first instance, it's either to devolve responsibility to the states and the resources with the control, or the federal government should make provision for the payment of salary, including the reflection on other grades, you know, to the states. Rather than saying, oh, the states are in crisis, we are going to give them bailout from Paris Fund, from one thing or the other. The fact of the matter is Nigerian states are under-resourced okay. because of the nature of, you know, the, the, the formed federal system of government that we're practicing right. currently. We, we have limited talk time, so Shagul, let's hear your thoughts. I know you want to react to this. I do have a question for you, though. Okay. No, no, no. I mean, it's, um, it goes without saying. He's, he's, he's right with a lot of the things that I think the only area that I have an issue is the, um, you know, the revenue formula. So it's 52.68 52 for, the, for yeah. the federal government. I think it's um, 20... Um, 30, no, 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 27 percent. No, no, no. Let me give you the figure so that you understand it. We actually don't have Look, much wait, time. Wait, Let wait, me it's 26 percent, 26 percent to the states, states exactly. 52.68 percent yeah. for the federal government. Mm -hmm. Divide 26 percent by uh, 36 states. Mm -hmm. uh, you have 0.78%. Okay, that's quickly, that's uh, as, as a final thought. Past just, I'm told we have uh, just a few yeah. minutes, um, mm -hmm. a minute, about a minute to yeah. go. I've lost my thought. The Federal government, the state governments are saying that yeah. they are going to, one of the ways that they can pay this bill yeah. is to retrench, I mean, sack some workers. Okay. If they go ahead and do this, due to maybe some pressure from labor not relenting because they haven't seen the finances of these states, mm -hmm. what then becomes the fate of these workers? Would you then say that the minimum wage, as against being beneficial to the people, is sucking the very life out of them? Um, I, I think before the governors talk about retrenchment, I mean, that I have an issue with the productivity of our workforce. I've always said that every opportunity I have. But before we get to that conversation, the governors have got to show he that comes to equity must come with clean hands. So you can't have a chunk of your monthly um, uh, revenues or your monthly budget um, available to you without accountability and you call it security votes, and you say you can't pay the minimum wage. The cost of governance has got to be addressed. The issue of retrenching the workforce must be a last resort. All right, I, I'm afraid that's where we, we have to stop. I have so many questions for you all. We'll continue the conversation off camera. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. It's a pleasure. My pleasure. All right, and thank you for watching so far, but we're not done. We'll go on a short break for Plus Reports, and when we return, I will give you my take. The federal government has reviewed that renovation works on the Akanu Ibrahim International Airport in Enugu State will soon commence. The Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, while speaking to newsmen after a recent budget defense session at the National Assembly, revealed that funds for the renovation of the airport had already been approved and are waiting release. Sirika said he is confident the renovation will commence before April 2020. The Enugu Airport money has been approved by Mr. President. We are waiting for the release, and I'm sure it will be released very soon. And we're meeting with the contractor today, and uh, today he will give us his program of work. We will look at that program of work diligently and ensure that it's procured within the time and within the budget. And the time for the procurement, I said, certainly will be before Easter. It will be concluded before Easter. However, I can give you a definite date after I met with the contractor today. Abinisha, the road to arriving at an acceptable wage for workers had been everything but sincere. Government at all levels, they've been tardy in handling this issue. What is now very clear for me is that we still have 
testy days ahead. How they finally resolve this entire mess will clearly show how important the government holds the Nigerian worker in the scheme of things. Thank you very much for staying with us tonight on the program. Please share your thoughts on our social media platforms, and that's at Plus TV Africa. Until next time, take care of yourself and be well.